spin-spin coupling is the interaction that takes place between two different H atoms on a given molecule and it causes the splitting of spectral lines on the proton and a Mars spectrum. And the separation distance between our two spectral lines that were split as a result of that spin-spin interaction, the spin-spin coupling, is given by the coupling constant designated with the uppercase J. Now, the question that we want to explore in this lecture is, what exactly determines the magnitude of the value J? What determines the magnitude of the coupling constant, the distance between our two spectral lines that were split as a result of the spin-spin interaction? So let's begin by discussing how the separation distance or the distance between our two different hydrogen atoms affects the magnitude of the coupling constant J. So for two different hydrogen atoms that are found on the same exact molecule, so if those two different hydrogen atoms are found closer with respect to one another on that particular molecule, that type of distance will produce a greater coupling constant than if those two H atoms were found closer together on that same molecule. So, to see exactly what we mean, to see exactly how the distance between our two different H atoms affects the magnitude of our coupling constant, let's take a look at molecule 1 and molecule 2. So on molecule 1, we have the separation distance between H1 and H2 that is given by three sigma bonds. So one, two, three sigma bonds. So in this case, the two different H atoms are found three sigma bonds apart, but in molecule two, the H atoms are found four sigma bonds apart. And because the separation distance in molecule one is less than the separation distance in molecule two, the magnitude of the coupling constant will be greater for molecule one than molecule two. So the range for the coupling constant value will be from about two to 30 hertz, but in this case, it will be from about zero to one hertz. Now, the other thing that basically affects the magnitude of our coupling constant J is the angle or the orientation of those two H atoms with respect to one another. And to see how the angle or the orientation of our two H atoms affects the coupling constant, let's look at these two alkenes. So we basically have two different isomers of the same type of alkene. So this is the trans and this is the cis isomer. So the magnitude of the coupling constant constant between the two adjacent hydrogen atoms for the cis and the trans ethene is different because of the difference in orientation between our two H atoms. So in this molecule, they are oriented in one way. In this, they are oriented in a completely different way. Now we see that the coupling constant value for these two H atoms is greater than for this case. So for the cis alkene, we see that the range is between 6 to 12 hertz, and for the trans, the range is between 12 to 18 hertz. Now, we can also describe how the dihedral angle between our two different H atoms in an alkane affects the magnitude of the coupling constant. And to see how that affects, let's take a look at the following molecule. So we have an alkane, and if we examine the value of the coupling constant between the H1 and H2 hydrogen atoms in this given alkane, we will see that it depends, the value of the coupling constant depends on the dihedral angle between these two H atoms.
So let's take a look at the following curve. This curve or graph is known as the Karplus curve. It basically describes how the orientation or the dihedral angle between these two H atoms in this particular alkane affects the value of J, the value of the coupling constant. So basically the y-axis is the magnitude of the coupling constant J given in Hertz and the x-axis is the angle, the dihedral angle between these two H atoms H1 and H2. So we see that when the atom H1 and H2 are basically aligned along the same exact plane, we get the following picture. The angle between these two H atoms, H1 and H2, is exactly zero degrees. And in this particular case, our value for the magnitude of the coupling constant will be relatively large. Now, if we examine an angle of 90 degrees, however, if this H2 basically orients itself at a 90 degree angle with respect to this H1, then the value for the coupling constant will drop to a minimum. Now, when the angle rotates to 180 degrees, the value will increase once again. So we see that not only does the distance between the two different hydrogen atoms affects the coupling constant, but also the angle between our two H atoms, the orientation between those two H atoms with respect to one another also affects the magnitude of the coupling constant. So once again, we conclude that the magnitude of the coupling constant between the two different hydrogen hydrogen atoms, that is, the separation distance between our two or more split spectral lines on the proton NMR spectrum depends on two things, on the distance between our two H atoms. So for this particular case, because the two H atoms are closer, that means the J range will be greater and the separation distance will also be greater than in this particular case where the H atoms are found farther apart and also not only will the distance but the angle will also affect the magnitude of the coupling constant as we saw in this case. At an angle of 90 for this particular alkane, the J value drops, but for an, for an angle of zero or 180, the J value will increase to a maximum as shown by the Karplus curve.